Shrimp and grits. It's a great Southern classic, but pretty popular everywhere now. So today on Cooking with Parker, I'm gonna show you how I make it. Kind of stole this recipe from the Angus barn where I work, adapted a little bit for the home use. Just gonna be a great kind of real creamy grits, nice shrimp sauce with some mushrooms, bacon, holy trinity and tomatoes. So we're gonna go through all of that. I can't wait to show you this recipe and let's go. We're gonna start with the grits. You can just kind of follow the directions on the back. You're doing four to one, but I like to add some half and half because some extra creaminess. You could use heavy cream or regular milk as well. I'm using some of my homemade chicken stock. I freeze these in ice cubes so they melt really fast. And then I just finished with like four cups of water. So I'm doing eight cups of liquid to start off with here. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm using the Holy Trinity. Now, while I do believe in the Holy Trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in this context, it's a culinary term for peppers, onions, and celery. So it's kind of a take on the a traditional classic mirepoix, which is French for onions, carrots, and celery. So this is a great blend, kind of using a lot of Cajun cooking, things like jambalaya, gumbo, things like that. So I'm using it for the shrimp and grits. Breaking down peppers just takes some practice, but the best method for me is you cut off the top and the bottom, and then you use your knife to kind of go around the edge and remove all the pith. You cut into thin julienne strips. I'll tell you about the story in that in a second and go back, dice those up. So then I grab a celery, gonna cut the top and bottom off of that, cut that into strips as well. And then we'll go and dice it up. So one time I was cooking with a few friends and I was kind of in charge. I said, hey, can you julienne these carrots and onions for me? The, all three of them stopped and looked at me for a second and said, do what now? I said, julienne. What? Julienne. And they still were puzzled. I said, they just cut into thin strips. So I thought that was a common term. Apparently it's not as well known. So there you go, a little uh, antidote for you. Anyways, my liquid for the grits reached a boil, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure out two cups of that, just use a nice pint container. It's a great little measuring tool, use it all the time, storage, all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna slowly pour in the grits while whisking constantly, just kind of helps it keep from plumping, not stick to the bottom or anything like that. And once it reaches a boil, I'm gonna turn this down to low. I'm gonna let that rest for, I think the package says 15 to 20 minutes, but you can really go as long as you want. Just cover that up with a lid. Now I'm gonna go on to my onion. I'm gonna go ahead and dice this. There we go. I'm gonna use my bench scraper, go ahead and collect this up and set it aside. So in the end, I've got about a little over two cups of peppers, one cup of onions, and one cup of celery. Next, I've got a pound of bacon. Yay, bacon! You wanna know how good bacon is? To improve other food, they wrap it in bacon. Now, I would have preferred slab bacon, but just kind of work with what I got. So I'm gonna cut these into what's called lardons. So just Pretty much thin little strips, more or less bacon bits if you ask me, but just kind of another culinary French word that people like to use. And uh, just once that's done, go ahead, check my grits, make sure they're cooking. Just, as I said, just kind of stir it. Move this over to my stove top so I can use my induction burner to cook off the bacon. Cutting the bacon into lardons allows you to kind of fit it all into one cast iron pan rather than, you know, the strips wouldn't work very well. So we're just gonna stir this up a little bit and I'm actually gonna throw it in my oven, decide to go with that route instead. Just kind of let it roast low and slow in there, about 350 for 25, 30 minutes or so. Next, we're gonna add some garlic, which is called adding the pope. So it might be a little sacrilegious, but you know, just kind of going with it. So you got our peppers, onions, celery, and now garlic. And usually it's actually green peppers and kind of a one-one ratio, so I'm Changing it up a little bit using the red, yellow, and orange peppers just gives better flavor and color if you ask me. And then we're just gonna mince our garlic till it's nice and fine. Use our bench scraper, set that aside. We can leave it on the cutting board. Next, we're gonna add some bacon grease to the pan. Whenever I cook bacon, I always like to save the grease. It's great to use for all sorts of different cooking things. So I've got the bacon cooking behind me, but I wanna kinda keep this process going. Didn't wanna wait for the bacon to finish cooking to get that grease. So I use my old safe grease. We're gonna drop our peppers celery into the pan, kind of give it a nice stir, let that start sweating down a little bit. Then add our onions and some salt. That's gonna help break down the veggies even more. Just kind of stir it, this on kind of medium low heat. I'm gonna add a nice four ounces of wild mushrooms. That'll give some great flavor. And then we're gonna kind of bulk it out with some sliced button mushrooms. They're just a lot cheaper. So that's why I kind of use those two blends of mushrooms. Forgot to film throwing in the garlic. I add that now so it doesn't overcook. Go ahead and check the grits on the stove top. Give them a quick stir. They're getting nice and thick, beautiful. And then go ahead and give my bacon a quick little toss as it's cooking in the oven. Get back to the veggies, give those a quick toss. So they're just kind of sweating down. Let's shrink it up a little bit so I can fit the rest of the mushrooms in the pan. And just kind of cook those till they're nice and soft, but you want a little texture with your mushrooms still. Next I'm gonna drop a can of whole tomatoes into a pot. So I'm making a few dishes for myself, but I think that's kind of all right. One pot meals have their place, but sometimes you just gotta 
dirty a few things up to get a great result in the end. So just using my hands to kind of crush these. So don't want to use crushed or diced tomatoes. I want to kind of that whole texture in there, but just breaking them down a little bit. So we can go ahead and add our veggie or our Holy Trinity mixture with the mushrooms into it. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and put that back on the heat so we can keep sweating down the veggies, get the tomatoes nice and hot. I add frozen shrimp is the fruit of the sea. So just letting the heat of the veggies, keep this on low medium heat, we're going to cook the shrimp. That's going to give it a lot of great flavor. Hit this with a little bit of Worcestershire, just another backbone of flavor. And then a few dashes of Tabasco. It's not really going to make it spicy, it just kind of gives a nice pepper and vinegar taste to it. And then we're going to add some Cajun seasoning. So if you want it spicy, you can always add more of those or add some like cayenne or red pepper flakes, something like that. We're just kind of leaving it mild for the masses. Um, and then if people want to make their own bowl of spice here, they can always add more Tabasco. All right, let's go ahead and try the grits. Mm. As I said, they're super creamy using all that half and half. Got good flavor from my homemade chicken stock. Mount it with some butter, grits. You just have them just as they are. I don't need to add cheese, anything like that. Check our bacon in the oven. It's almost there. We'll probably give it another five, 10 minutes to make it nice and crispy. So there it is, look at that beautiful bubbling, all that grease. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside in my bowl. It's kind of a perpetual bacon grease. Food code probably wouldn't improve with that, but for home use, it works just fine. And then, then we're gonna dump the rest of that bacon straight into our sauce. Make sure you add a little bit of that bacon grease. It's gonna give a nice kind of body feel to it. And that's all that there is to it. Really, we're gonna stir this up. We got our nice shrimp sauce. Use that Holy Trinity, tomatoes, mushrooms, and bacon. A little bit of seasoning and spices. Go ahead and try the sauce. Now it's got everything in it. See if it needs any adjustments. Amen. That's money right there. Cooking the shrimp in it gives it so much extra flavor. I'm gonna put this together and have myself a great meal. Starting off by just ladling a nice spoonful of grits into the bottom of a bowl. So if you want a little bit thicker, you can always cook it longer. The longer you cook stone ground grits, the better. Thinner, just add some more liquid. So we're gonna go ahead and stir this up one more time, give myself a nice ladle full, get all that good liquid on there. And then there's about 51 to 60 shrimp is what the bag, bag said. So I said this serves about eight people. So you get about six or seven or eight shrimp per person. And give myself a try of the shrimp and grits. Mm. So good. It's got that nice, really creamy, flavorful grits. The sauce, pretty simple, but also can be kind of seen as elegant with the mushrooms bacon, tomatoes, the holy trinity just kind of brings it all together. And you can't go wrong with this. As I said, I kind of modified this from the Angus barn, so they gave me permission to use some of the recipes if I wanted. At least, you know, pretty sure the owner, one of the owners gave me clearance on that. So we're going with it and uh, can't get enough of this. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.